Hello to all of you who are watching. Today, I have the great joy of interviewing Sister Michelle in person. Um, <laughs> it's not through a computer screen as I've done the previous interviews, but I am here in Madrid with her. And so I said, this is providential. I can interview in person. Um, I had to convince her a little bit to do it in English. We just did one in Spanish, but she speaks English wonderfully. You'll, you'll be able to find out in a few minutes as soon as I let her talk. Um, but you also have to be patient with her, obviously, because it's not her native. Tongue. She's from Ecuador, um, so it's an amazing gift that we have someone from Ecuador who lived with Sister Claire during her last years there in Ecuador who can share her experiences. And actually, she met Sister Claire in Ecuador before she was a sister. Obviously, she wasn't just like this when she first met Sister Claire. Anyway, sister Claire was the first sister that she met. Um, so we're going to ask her to tell her memories of how she met Sister Claire and then what Sister Claire was like in that first year when she started getting to know the sister when she discovered her vocation, how Sister Claire helped her in her vocation. Um, she's got lots of stories to tell, so just get ready. <laughs> you can also ask your questions like in previous interviews, any questions that you have about Sister Claire, uh, you have this once in a lifetime opportunity to ask Sister Michelle, so <laughs> you can ask her anything you want. Um, I can also help to answer questions, so. So yeah, so let's get started. So Sister Michelle. <clears throat> Well, let me give a brief introduction. So Sister Michelle was 19 mm -hmm. and she had kind of, she was baptized, but she had fallen away from the faith. She wasn't too sure God existed, lots of questions about the faith and she hadn't been able to find anyone who could answer her questions. And she had kind of like started like telling God not to bother her, no, not to get into her life. She didn't want to know anything about him. And so she was studying architecture at college at a university there in Ecuador. And it happened to be the University of the Holy Spirit where the sisters in Guayaquil would go to do apostolate. So they would just go walk around the university, talk to students, invite them to meetings, have, invite them to confirmation, catechism classes, anything that they could think of. Sister Claire actually loved that apostolate. It was one of the hardest apostolates. Other sisters didn't like it at all because you just had to <laughs> walk around, try to talk to young people who didn't want to talk to you, try to convince them. I mean, it was really hard, but Sister Claire enjoyed that challenge and she saw it as an opportunity to fulfill her third mission, which was a conquest of young people, people for Jesus Christ. So. Um, and she always kind of liked challenges as well. And I think that was part of it. Um, so anyways, you'll see in the story of how she met Sister, um, Sister Michelle, how it was a challenge, but she just <laughs> went out and went right for them. So tell us, so what, so you were arriving late for class one day and you're walking? Yeah, around uh, I was in the library mm -hmm. um, preparing my project to present it to in class. And then uh, it was late, so I had one good friend she was with me because we were preparing this together. And then we had to go to our class that was uh, in front of the uh, library. library. Yeah, so you had to like, yeah. cross the, like, it was like a patio or a courtyard yeah. with palm trees. So yeah. You had to cross from one side to the other. Yeah, and the palm trees were as big as uh, a person could hide behind it and you can see the person. <laughs> and that detail is important for the next part. Because we were walking out the library and then I saw um, two people People <laughs> wearing white and with really long rosaries. And I was like, what are they doing here? Because I didn't understand why nuns were in the university. It was like weird because I didn't really met nuns before. But I was like, yeah, okay. And there weren't usually nuns walking around you, the yeah, university. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, but I was like, okay. They are there. I, I don't care because they are walking through the university. But as uh, um, in the time that we were walking, that one of the sisters saw us and she like made eye contact. And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> she wants to talk to me because I can feel it that she she wanted to talk to us. And I be, began to walk faster because I didn't want to talk to her, but she began to come faster to Please. us. And um, I told my friend, well, my friend told me that no one wants to talk to us. And I was like, uh, no. I know, <laughs> I know, but I don't want it. <laughs> and just keep walking and we were starting walking faster. And then she hid uh, behind this palm tree. So when we passed by the, the palm tree, she jumped out of it. And she was like, are you running away from an And I was like, <laughs> No. <laughs> oh, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and she said like, okay, 
I just, I don't want to bother you, but I wanted to invite you to a meeting because um, um, these meetings are important because uh, they are about formation so that you can become a true woman. And I was like, and inside, I didn't say anything aloud, but I was thinking like, who's gonna teach me to be a real woman? You? <laughs> no. And I was like, oh, okay, thanks, yes. Um, we'll be there. Yeah, we're really interested in it. And she said, well, but you haven't asked me where is, um, where the meeting will be, what yeah, time it is, what, what, what day. Time, yeah. And I was like, ah, yeah, yeah, okay. So when is it? When I said, and she told us the time and the day, and we were like, oh, okay, great. We'll, we'll see you. Yeah. <laughs> and she was like, but please don't be like the rest of these students who say that, yes, I will go. And then, then no, don't show up. Yeah. Because you know why that happens? And I was like, no, I don't know. Because you're a coward, all of you, because you're afraid to know uh, the truth about God and what God wants from you. And I was like, <laughs> And, uh, well, that my, kind of hurt your pride. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, I will go just because you say I'm a coward, I will go. And, well, we just go to our class. And after that, my friend and I, we were talking about it. Because you were still not planning on going. No, in. no. No, because I said, like, I, I have a lot of things to do. I don't have time to waste and go into a formation meeting. But no, I don't want it. But my friend told me, okay, you know what? We told her that we were going. And I was like, yes, but you have heard that. Her, like, that nobody else goes. Yeah. <laughs> and she was like, but lying into a nun, that can be, like, a really big um, sin. So I think we should go. And I was like. Oh, <laughs> okay, we'll go. Just one meeting and that's it. I'm not going anymore, anytime more. And after that, we went to that first meeting and Sister Claire was there and she was laughing a lot because she saw us and she remembered us from this encounter in the court. And she was like, oh, so you weren't a coward. <laughs> and, well, um, in that meeting, I... Um, I saw like, because for me, the thing that impressed me the most about Sister Claire was her- um, Her gaze, her eyes. Yeah, yeah. Her, because I have seen a lot of people that is good, you know, and they live in like a good life. Good yeah. life. But I, I, until that time, I haven't seen one person ha that has that gaze, like so clear, so pure and, yeah, with the the strength to tell you the truth without caring what anybody thought. Yeah, yeah. So that's how I met her. <laughs> okay, so you, so you went to this first meeting after mm -hmm. Sister invited you, and then you started going to more because it really like started answering all those questions that you had deep mm -hmm. down in your heart. Um, you started going to other activities that the yep. sisters invited to you, mm -hmm. you two. <clears throat> And when did you first start thinking that you had a vocation with the sisters as well? <laughs> well, I think it was one month after going to the meetings and then sisters, they um, invite us, my friend and I, to go to their house and well, just talk to them or to, to eat something. And, and then I discovered like really quick time that I, that I has a I had a vocation and um, yeah that's how I discovered it. <laughs> okay, so that's how you you also started then spending more time with the sisters obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then at one point you were also living at their house as well. Yeah. To be it's funny same. because when I um, when I was in a university before uh, before I discovered that I had a vocation as a servant sister, um, the sisters of this community in Guayaquil, they got their car stolen. Oh. That's, that was really funny because um, my father, he gave me a car. So he had a car and I was like really free and I would go every but place. You go anywhere you yeah. And I used to go out with my friends at night. But when the sisters got their car stolen, well, um, they had to go to the university in bus, in the public bus. 
but that was like kind of dangerous because well equator like there are parts which yeah, are dangerous, dangerous yeah. yeah and going in public bus at certain times could be dangerous that's the thing that i had in my mind when i heard that that the sisters were coming in and a public bus so i offered myself to be like her, their driver yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i used to to um take them to their house after um, meetings. And that was like a really like fun time. And Sister Claire, she used to laugh a lot because she's like, you are the price, um, your vocation, um, our car was the price uh, for, your for your vocation. She used to, <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> no, but I always, when I've heard that story, I always thought, you know, like our Lord will do anything to be able to, you know, if he he has said he had set his eyes on you and he was willing to do anything, even have the sisters get their car stolen to be able to permit you to enter yeah. into contact with the sisters and and call you guys. Yeah, yeah, so really funny. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I would go a lot of times it's, to their yeah yeah to school. their house and yeah. on time. Yeah. So, how would you describe Claire? So, as you got to know Sister Claire, how would you describe her? She was like, um, the thing that uh, impressed me the most about her, it was her joy. Because it was like a, a profound joy. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah, like it was not just to make jokes and be happy because we have to be happy. No, because it was something deeper. Was deeper. Yeah, even if you're tired, even if you have a lot of things to do, even if you have to, um, um, when you have to correct exams from, because she was a teacher in the school. And even if you have a lot of things to do, you're, you're happy because you're doing God's will. And that was one thing that impressed me the most because, yeah, because sometimes it's hard just to keep a smile on your face. When you Did you notice that even then, like once you were living with the sisters like in their house when it's not, because you could think, well, maybe she's just smiling hmm. because there's girls visiting or we're at the university and I have to smile. But did you notice that same joy even at home? Like when there was nobody watching? Yeah. Cause that was like kind of one thing that I was afraid of because living with the sisters in their house, I was going to like see like um, frictions between them and you know, cause we all have different characters, but with So her, you were expecting that. that yeah. Happened. Yeah. Cause for me with my brother is hard. <laughs> to be always good so but yeah that was something that really impressed me because she was like that with everybody <laughs> even with the sisters that she lived at, lived at, that at home yeah tell the lemon story <laughs> <laughs> she laughed because I, I always ask her to tell the lemon story but <laughs> um well that was because she was um well, one day she was sick. She was uh, she had a stomachache. Yeah, she, was she wasn't sick. feeling well. Yeah. I think it's because she drank water from the tap that she wasn't supposed to, but yeah. she was really thirsty, so she yeah. did it. Because we were playing soccer and we didn't have water because we didn't think about it. And well, but she found a- um, Like a fountain. Yeah, and then she drank water, but that wasn't good for her, well, for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> and then, well, she was- She was sick. sick. Yeah, and well, as I was living with the sisters, um, one sister told me if I could go to uh, buy lemons, because it would be good for her to drink a lemonade. And I went, and then, because I realized she was really feeling bad because she didn't appear in breakfast, and, um, and um, in prayer. Yeah. yeah. And then, well, I bought the lemons, we made the lemonade, and then she came. She came out. Yeah, to drink it. And she was like, you see her face, and she was sick because you can notice her yeah. eyes were swollen and she wasn't feeling good. But she was like really happy, like, hello, good morning, everybody. And I was like, oh. and, and she was like, oh, how nice for your part to make me this great lemonade and <laughs> I, I can drink it. And she was like making fun about it. She, she, being, yeah, she was laughing and making almost making fun of her not feeling well. Yeah, 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 not complaining or no, not at all. That was impressive. <laughs> and I th like that every, whenever I hear stories about that of how she would joke about when she's feeling sick and and try to 
ignore the fact, you know, I don't know, not give it any importance. It reminds me of stories of when she was little and her, her mom would tell a story of how once a dog just like nipped her, like he didn't bite her. He just like nipped her with her mouth, his mouth. And, and she did this whole scene, like she couldn't walk because he had touched the dog had touched her leg. And like her dad had to come out and like pick her up, carry in the house. And then they had to serve her all afternoon because of her leg. And so she did this whole drama scene because of this little dog nipping her leg. Um, so like, that's what she was character wise and like without the grace of God, but then with the grace of God later, you can see how hmm. she, she would use her drama, but to hide her um, illness and to make others laugh and forget about herself. So. so I see there are, there is um, a few questions, but before we go to the questions, because Marie Lou is asking a question. Um, she was watching us in Spanish before. <laughs> she so joined us for the English one as well. Great. Um, but I want Sister Michelle, I want to ask her to tell a story about how Sister Claire helped her in her vocation. Because she went, so she discovered she had a vocation. Um, she spent some time discerning. And then she entered as a candidate. And a few months afterwards, like six months after mm -hmm. entering as a candidate, she went to Spain to finish her formation. Because usually our candidates first spend time in their country, close to the sisters as candidates. And then they go to Spain to be able to finish formation as candidates there in Spain and then enter the novitiate in Spain. Um, so after six months, it was time for Sister Michelle to go to Spain. It, her parents had never really accepted her vocation very much. It was always very, very difficult for them, kind of like Sister Claire's own family. Sister Claire could very definitely very feel very identified with <laughs> Sister Michelle in that. Um, she could understand her in that moment as she was in the airport because everybody went, like all the sisters, all the young members of the home of the mother, her family, like everyone was there at the airport to say goodbye. Um, <laughs> I'll tell what happened. <laughs> and I I have um, like told to myself that I wasn't gonna cry because I um, was not gonna show anybody that I was struggling inside because I was fighting against my own vocation and I was like trying to like fit everything in its place. and. As I knew that my parents were suffering about it because well, I don't want it to show that I was um, struggling with that. But the thing is, I didn't come in um, with God. <laughs> I was like, just with my own strength, I'm not gonna cry it and that's it. And then I went to the airport and I said goodbye to everybody, to my friends. And I was like, okay. I was like smiling and laughing and everything. It's okay. And then I was going to pass to the boarding gates. Mm -hmm. is that? And then my brother, my little brother, he came with my um, sweater mm -hmm. and he gave it to me because he like stopped me at the boarding gate and he began to cry. And I, when I saw him, <laughs> I like, I you totally broke down. Yeah, yeah. I broke down and I began to cry like a lot. And I just froze there. I couldn't like walk. Towards them or towards the gate? Yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> and then it was funny. Well, because you saw him crying and then you looked and you saw your parents crying yeah, as well. Yeah, I saw my parents there back there crying because they were like against it. And then I saw the sisters that were in that community that year. But behind all those people, there was the people, uh, the the members of the home. The right? members of the home. And then Sister Claire was like behind all of them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I just uh, heard somebody calling me, Michelle, Michelle. And I um, saw Sister Claire, she was like waving. And she said, like, Walk, it's just one step. Walk and then look back. Walk, walk. And that helped me like to wake up. And I was going, I'm doing, I have to walk. And then I just turned around and entered the boarding gate. And that helped me a lot. And sometimes, in when I'm when I have like my um, battles, yeah, difficult moments, yeah. struggles. Yeah, I remember that. I, it's just one step. Just walk and don't look back. Yeah. Yeah, because there was one question Marie Lou said, like, how, how um, you asked Sister Claire for help in hard times, and I said, like, that. I think that's tied to that because you feel like she's you can hear her voice say, "Just walk, just one step. Don't look back." Yeah. 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 <laughs> but is there anything else that comes to you about Sister Claire that helps you? Mm -hmm. Boys. <laughs> um, yeah, because 
as sister said, um, she had like um, her parents were against her vocation also. So um, sometimes she would um, like tell me her um, difficult moments with her parents because she said like uh, when she was in the airport um, before she was uh, going to Spain, her, her parent, her father, father was like um, crying and shouting to her, like not leave them. Totally. Yeah, and and that helped me a lot because she said like I know that you uh, like um, struggle. Like, yeah, yeah, like you feel bad in that mm -hmm. moment, but um, upon all of that you know you're doing God's will. So you have to do it and then he will give you the grace to do it. But like, don't wait, like you will feel don't something. Wait until you feel like yeah, you can do you it. You have to do it. You have to walk, just walk. Yeah, that was an advice that she gave me one thing. Um, this is something we talked about in the Spanish interview before, but how you said like what Sister Claire stood out for the most was her joy. Like that was mm -hmm. just something that, and, and I, I guess, I think most of us thought that, you know, Sister Claire was also very joyful and happy as a young person with her friend. Like when I first met her when she was 17 and I was 14, um, she was also always happy. I mean, it's, it's something that she did have character wise, that gift. Um, though I think it got deeper as she got to know our Lord. That wasn't just a superficial, Joy, because at first it was more of a superficial, you could tell it wasn't something that really penetrated deep in her. Later, you could just see it was like it flew coming naturally out of her heart. But when when I was writing the book, we discovered an email that she had written to Father Raphael. Um, and actually when he passed me all the emails he had, but he didn't read them at that time. And so I took this one email to him. I was like, Father, do you remember this? And I like showed it to him and we read it together. and. And obviously he was very moved as well reading that and then reading his response to her and how that would have helped her. But in this email, she she writes about how one of the greatest struggles she had, or she said, I, could, I don't know if it's a temptation or a purification, but it's very hard for me to smile and to be joyful. Like I have these feelings of sadness and it just, I, but at the same time, it's like our Lord asked me nonstop continuously to be joyful and to make others joyful, that I have to say a joke, that I have to make them laugh. I have to tell the story to, to you know, bring everybody's spirits up. And she's like, that's something our Lord asked for me nonstop. And I can't say no, I have to smile. And so to discover that, that, that joyfulness, like how did that impact you? I guess is my question to discover that joyfulness, um, that that joyfulness that you saw wasn't something that was just natural, but it was a true virtue. Um, that she did out of love for Lord, even though she didn't feel, even though her feelings didn't accompany her. For me, when I read the book, it was like an examination from my conscience. <laughs> Just, yeah, because I never saw her like sad or um, showing you that she was tired or when somebody didn't respond to what she was willing, waiting for that person to respond because they had to do it this thing in their spiritual life that you will think, well, that's in like kind of justice. You know? Just be mad because this person is not responding. But I never saw her like, yeah, like um, upset. Yeah, upset because of that. She was like always joyful and happy and trying to make everybody laugh. But for this, because she wanted to help you like from these little things to take you to um, to our Lord. And that was, yeah, something that you can like um, examine in on your own life and see, well, I don't know if I'm doing the same thing and, or just a little. A little bit. Yeah. Um, I see they're asking what book. So there's a book that's called Alone with Christ Alone. It's called Sister Claire Crockett, Alone with Christ Alone. It was published last September. So if you Google it, you can find information about the book. Um, and it's, I think the most, the, the best part about the book, besides the fact that I wrote it, no, <laughs> the, no, the best part about the book is that it really has a lot of Sister Claire's own writings and her thoughts. 
Um, and then I add commentaries to help you understand the moment. But, it, but I think it, the best thing is to be able to enter into her heart and see what she was, you know, because in the documentary, you see what she did exteriorly. You get to know her. But I think the book really helps to get to know, like, what was inside and how her relationship with the Lord and what motivated her to do all that she did. Um, yeah, so if you have more questions, you can write them as we go. We don't have much more time, about 10 more minutes, but but yeah, you can ask us and either me or Sister Michelle can respond to the questions. I advise you to take advantage of the fact that we have Sister Michelle here with us today. Um, there's not many sisters who speak English who live with her in Ecuador, so it's a great blessing to have Sister Michelle who speaks English so well here with us. So I wanted to ask, um, so every Sunday you'd have meetings with the young members of the home of the mother with mm -hmm. the girls. Um, but obviously she didn't give the meeting every week, but when you, when she did speak to the young people, do you remember anything that she would usually say to them? Like, well, what was her advice to young people? Okay. Even though she wouldn't um, give the meeting every Sunday, she would play the guitar. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they, the, the young girls mm -hmm. would like one song and every Sunday, the um, same song. The same song, but two or three times. <laughs> and then we're like, are you tired? You can show us, um, teach us new Other songs. songs. <laughs> but she was like, if these songs help them, we could play it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> that her interest in playing the guitar wasn't because she wanted to sing that song or because she yeah. liked it, but whatever because helped she, the yeah. girls the most. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and, well, there's a funny story about that, but I will go. Um, oh no, tell the funny story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny in quotations. <laughs> yes, um, it, there is a song in our songbook that I have never heard um, to be played, but just Sister Claire, that it's called uh, I Confess. Mm -hmm. And that song is um, it's really strong in all the things that they say, because it says like, uh, I know that I have done nothing to respond to you that I have a uh, mask and um, with people that I put my- Put a mask uh, so yeah. I'm not with being who I truly am. Uh -huh. And um, well, a lot of things like that. I but it's like remember. a song of somebody who's like confessing all that they do wrong and yeah. like that they're not responding yeah. to the Lord basically, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And she will, uh, one day she was um, talking to a group of girls before we went to the parish because we were having a liberation that day. And she was um, talking to them about uh, mediocrity. And she was saying like, you cannot leave that anymore because you have to go out of that place because your soul is gonna die if you don't do something for changing your life. And then um, she said, and I'm gonna like, um, dedicate, dedicate. Uh, dedicate a song to you in the adoration so be um pay attention yes yeah. <laughs> and then we went to to the adoration in the parish and she sung that song and i saw a lot of tears crying because she sung it with uh, with um such strength and yeah like force yeah that it was like she was showing to you it helped me too <laughs> <laughs> yeah because it was like she was she would always sing like aloud and with all her heart. But that day she was like trying to say something really like, direct to their hearts. Yeah. And that helped us. So when someone's writing questions, and I think it's a question that you could answer, but I also maybe I think it can tie into this subject of mediocrity, superficiality. And so I want you to try to answer like what you think Sister Claire would answer. Okay. And so she said, How do you overcome? not wearing makeup or earrings or curling your hair. Um, she, this young woman says, I feel like I need that to feel pretty. I know that beauty on the inside is best and true beauty, but how can you overcome that? Because I think that, well, I don't know, but I think that she would say that you have to know yourself as the woman who the Lord has created you. Like, like know yourself as the woman that the Lord has created you to be. Like yeah, you have to be who yeah. the Lord. Yeah. And at, as long, well, when you discover, when, yeah, when you, when, discover. You, when you discover that, you will know like the true beauty that you have inside. And that will help you to live like free. <laughs> like it will, it will give you like the, an interior freedom. Yeah. To be happy with what you are. 
because you don't have to like feed on um, models and like be like this person or like uh, wear these things that I I see in um, TV, but just be who the Lord yeah. wants you to be. I think that that's what you can say. But. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true because that also ties in to what you were saying before that I think in Spanish at least about how she'd always speak about how young people put right. on masks yeah. and that they pretend to be one way in front of certain people and another way in other yeah. people and I think that has to do with like the makeup and your and, and that's not to say that you should never wear makeup, yeah. but the problem is, is when you want to like, when you're with a certain group of people, you want to show yourself to be a certain way in front of them. And then when you're with another, and that's what she said, to, right? You were saying before, that's what she said to young girls at the meeting. She's like, mm -hmm. so the clothes you wear here and like the way you act here with the sisters, that should be exactly the same as how you act later with your friends when you go out. Like you can't be two different people. Mm -hmm. um, that's like a big problem that I think young people have. Mm -hmm. And then there were girls that used to say like, I don't have much, that I am. And I'm quiet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, she w and she said to that girl, well, do you want me to see um, your social networks? Networks and we will see. And her face was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, that's what I'm telling you that you are wearing a mask. Maybe not now, not with your friends, but what are you showing to the persons that you don't know? You cannot be like that and treat yourself as an object so that people can see you because you think that the best thing of you is your external beauty because that's not worth it. Yeah. That's something that, Sister Claire would talk a lot about superficiality, and I think that's something that she herself had to overcome. Yeah. Um, because Father Raphael, when she was a novice, I lived together with her as a novice, so that that's what comes memory come back. He gave her uh, like a motto one year during her novitiate, and he said, "Always be joyful, but without superficiality." And for me, that word superficiality was kind of always a mystery. Like, what does that mean? Like, always be joyful, with, but without superficiality. Um, and as I wrote the book about Sister Clay, I think I started to discover more and more like what that meant to her. But that meant like that you, when you're not superficial, like a person who is superficial is only worried about the exterior mm -hmm. of everything, not just exterior appearance of oneself, but also exterior appearance of like others or whatever's going on. Whereas a truly profound person, which would be the opposite of superficial is one who's worried about the true beauty on the inside. And I think that's, um, so she herself, had to learn to to overcome instead of just being an actress and worried about like what people are seeing and how the exterior show that you're putting on, but really like be who you are and not superficial. Like mm -hmm. that what's inside is transmitted outside and the other way around. What's outside has to be what's inside. It has to there has to be a total coherence there. Um, and so, so that's something that she really learned and she saw that young people had that danger. I think that's why she spoke so often mm -hmm. about it but we're already five minutes over time. So we're going to have to end this interview. Um, I see there's a question about whether there's a CD about Sister Claire. So Sister Claire did record a CD when she was in Ecuador. She mm -hmm. went, uh, it was when she was in Playa Prieta, but she went back to Guayaquil because they asked her, like, you have to record your songs. And so she did it with another sister, even though that's not something that we usually do. If we do a CD, we always like all the sisters singing together, not just like one sister, but um, they asked and asked and so our superiors saw that he could help people and we're very thankful now that she did do this <laughs> um, and so it's about 20 songs in Spanish and it's up on the website about Sister Claire so it's sisterclaire.com and if you go to the menu multimedia there's a link for the CD and so you could download the mp3s and listen to them um, I don't think we're going to make the CD because just it's kind of hard to get ship it worldwide we're seeing that with the book also the difficulty of getting it worldwide so it's it's easier if you just download the mp3 from the website um, and so if you have any other questions people obviously we want to be able to answer your questions about sister claire about anything you can write i'll i'll type in my email address in the in the chat and so you can write any questions and that way the next every month we're going to do an interview like this so next month we can, if we already have some of your questions that way we can directly answer them or also just respond by email. We can do that as well because um, we're very open to help and whatever's needed. Um, and also if you, if you have any graces that you receive from Sister Claire or would like to share how Sister Claire has 
has helped you, we're also very grateful if you email us and tell us about that because we love hearing that. It, it's very inspiring. And it'll also be very helpful now as soon, God willing, um, we will have to present the documentation, documentation for the opening of Sister Claire's cause. And so all the testimonies are very welcome and very helpful. So yes, I'll, I'll post the link for the CD <laughs> in the chat as well, as soon as this finishes. So thank you so much for watching and say a prayer for us sisters. We'll say a prayer for you all. God bless.